In this video, I'm going to talk about how to identify the daily bias and also how you should trade the daily bias on the lower time frame. So now let's go into the first example. So what do we see here? We see that price had entered a discount from this low up to this high. We've entered a discount where there is a PRA right here. This further gap, which we see price respect or starting to respect as and the reason we see the price is starting to respect it is because we failed to make a close below previous day's low. So that is a confirmation. The price is most likely to be willing to go higher as we failed to take a previous day's low and price is starting to deliver from the lower time frame. So now we want to anticipate previous day's high to be taken out. So this is going to be the draw on liquidity for the next day. Now we can go into the lower time frame and anticipate this to be the drawn liquidity. And we also want to see this placement through this further gap right here. So now we can drop down into the four hour. So here on the lower time frame, we can see the price started to respect this daily further gap. So now we want to see a change instead of delivery happen right here. So right here we see price makes its change in stiff delivery. And we also see that price started to expand higher in the AM session. So now we're just going to skip Monday and move to Tuesday. So right here, now price moves to Tuesday. So now we want to look for a trade entry as we see that Monday gave us confirmation that price is willing to move higher, both from the daily for early gap, and that we also created a change in state of delivery. So we have two confirmations that price is willing to go higher, and we also closed above the daily CB. So now we're going to lower time frame because we identified that the bias is bullish. So right here on the hourly time frame, we can see the price made a close above the previous day's high, which is Friday's high. And then we also create the change in state of delivery on the four hour and we made a close above the daily basis CBI. So in that case, we're now on the hour time, hourly time frame. And we could expect anticipate price moving down into some of the PD arrays that we created down here. But we could also see the price can make a potential breaker block. So we definitely want to see manipulation maybe down into a PD array and then distribution in the AM session closing above the breaker block. So now that we are mostly bullish, we can go into the lower time frame. So right here on the 15 minute time frame, we see that we have the hourly breaker right here, or the potential hourly breaker. And we have just exited the Asian session. So we, we trade in the AM session. So now we will just play London session through and wait for the AM session. And right here, the London session plays through and we see the price is going down to some of the PDA rays, which we, which we men mentioned before in the hourly time frame. And we could also anticipate maybe London session manipulating, and then AM session we want to see distribution. Right here the AM session comes, and what do we see? We see pri price is starting to distribute higher. And also what do we have right here? We have the inversion for gap model. As you see, we have a singular inversion for gap right here. And in terms liquidity has not been taken out here. So in that case, this could be a trade entry. So let's just say we were to enter right when price went down here and put our stop loss down at the slow, and then target the previous day's high, which is all the way up here. So let's see if this could work out. And as we see, price distributed higher, as I mentioned before, and took out the previous day's high. So some of the things we want to look for, when looking for identifying the daily bias and also using it on the low time frame, is first of all, we want to have a obvious strong liquidity, which could, for example, be previous day slow and previous day high. Second, we want to find the premium and discount of the daily range to see if price 
wants to draw down into maybe a further gap within a discount. And third, we have to see lower time frame confirmation uh, of the higher prices. So let's just say price fails to take our previous day's low and starts to deliver from a further gap. Then on the lower time frame, we want to see confirmation that price is probably going to be willing to go higher. And then fourth, we only want to trade in the AM session because that is where there's going to be the most volatility. So for next example, we're going to talk about how important it is to have a strong and obvious draw on liquidity. So right here, we see that price down here created a balanced price range. And when price creates a balanced price range, it is willing to move higher as it is a strong confirmation for higher prices. So now that we also see the price fail to take out this high up here, which made relative equal highs, which is a strong draw on liquidity. And then we also see the price made a close below previous day's low, as you see right here. But now that we have a strong draw on liquidity, which is relative equal highs up here, and we see the price did not disrespect this value gap, the bias is still bullish in this case. So this is a bit easier to identify the bias as we have a strong draw on liquidity. So that's why you want to have that strong draw on liquidity. So we could potentially anticipate price taking out the previous day's low, but then failing to close below it and closing above the draw on liquidity or taking out the relative equal highs. So right here we see we have the relative equal highs up here. And we also see the price respected this value gap down here or is starting to. So now that we have the obvious draw on liquidity, we want to see price make a reaction off of this further gap. So now we can go into lower time frame and see if price can give a confirmation that we want to see higher prices. So down here on the one hour, we really don't see anything that leads to a confirmation for higher prices. So in that case, we will go in the lower to the 15 minute time frame. And what do we see here on the 15 minute? We don't really see nothing, so in that case, we will just wait for the New York AM session. So right here, the Asian session starts. So now we wait to see if London session does anything, and then of course take the trade entry in the New York session. And we'll see Asian session just makes consolidation, and then we see that the London session, it looks like it displaces above the Asian high, then went lower. Right here, price takes out the London lows and also these lows as it was relative equal lows and that is of course a strong draw on liquidity. So now we could anticipate higher prices. So we wait for the AM session. And here comes the AM session. And what do we see? Well, we see the price is having a lot of displacement or expansion higher. So of course the obvious strong liquidity would be up here. So we want to look for a trade entry that could be lining up with the obvious draw on liquidity, of course. So right here you could take a trade entry, but of that what that was at 930. So to me I wouldn't really want to take it there. And right here we see the price starting to respect this value gap so let's see if it holds and we'll see this value gap holds and now we are close to the obvious draw on liquidity and as we see right at the am lunch or new york lunch we take out the obvious draw on liquidity so this would be the trade entry if we were to take any and of course as we see we have the Inversion further gap model as price is delivering from a further gap. And then we have this singular inversion further gap. So if we were to take a trade entry, we could take it right when price make the close, put our stop loss at the low, and then target, of course, the obvious draw on liquidity up here. That will only make it one point average reward ratio. So in that case, we could move our stop loss up a little as the inversion further gap is all the way up here. So maybe down here. And that will make a better risk reward ratio. So that's how we could identify and use bias on the lower time frame. So that was it for this video, and I really hope you liked it. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. 
And if there's anything you didn't understand, or if you have any questions, just comment down below. And then if you'd like to engage with other traders, you can join my Discord. Link in the description is totally free.